This lovely home has three spacious bedrooms, a country kitchen, and a terrace overlooking the 18th fairway at Johnny K Country Club. And it's been reduced to $199.5. Hi, you're on the air with Joanna Loudon. Hello, Joanna. That dress looks darling on you. <laughs> what shoes are you wearing with it? Uh, heels. Uh, did you have a question about the house? What house is that, dear? <laughs> Thank you for calling. You're on the air with Joanna Loudon. Are you wearing slats? <laughs> I just told that other caller I'm wearing heels. With those earrings? <laughs> Are you crazy? <laughs> we'll be right back after this message. And we're out. So those, uh, those shoes are called heels, huh? I've, I've been hosting this show for eight months, and nobody seems to understand that I'm selling houses. Well, uh, maybe now is a good time to remind the viewers, you know, what, what the concept is. You can start by refreshing my memory. It's a real estate program. It's not a fashion show? <laughs> You're not a model? <laughs> but don't be silly. Jo Joanna's not young enough. <laughs> to be old enough to be a mom. Back in five, four, three, two. Welcome back to Your House is My House. Note the name of my show. It's not Your Shoes or My Shoes. No, no, no. I show houses and you can buy them. Simple enough, isn't it? You're on the air with Joanna Loudon. Yeah, yeah, uh, thanks for reminding me and the wife about, you know, what your show's about and everything. Uh, I got a question. Go ahead. How do you keep them teeth of yours so damn white? <laughs> Baby Stephanie is getting more and more beautiful every day. And? Oh, right. Mama Stephanie is getting more and more beautiful every day, too. <laughs> oh, stop it, George. You're embarrassing me. Boy, it's sure going to be confusing having two Stephanies around here. Why, gee, guy? Well, uh, let's say five years from now, I get my head stuck in the banister, and I call out, Help me, Stephanie. Which one of you will come running? Oh, that's easy. Michael would. I guess I was worried for nothing. Bye-bye, <laughs> pretty little Steffi. Bye, George. <laughs> oh, yes, you are. Oh, yes, you are. Hey, feast your peepers, innkeepers. <laughs> oh, honey, we're invited to the official viewing of baby Stephanie. We felt the town should be allowed to pay homage to our creation. <laughs> Wait a minute. You invited the whole town here? Well, we thought about having it at our place, but you know what a mess these townspeople make. Well, don't you think it would have been a good idea to ask our permission first? Well, what would you have said? Absolutely not. Well, then it wouldn't have been a good idea, would it? <laughs> I, I suppose not. Now run along and put one of those flyers under every windshield wiper in town. Radio. Oh, and, and, you know, don't limit yourself to the town. Uh, flag down cars on, on the interstate. <laughs> Adios, all. Sayonara, little Steffi son. Oh! oh. <laughs> Golly, Wampers, every time I speak to her, it's howl rama <laughs> Well, maybe she's having trouble understanding whatever language it is that, that you speak. <laughs> could be, could be. From now on, I speak plain. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye, young girl. <laughs> Is there some tragic flaw in this novice, Paul? Hmm. Joanna, your show is on today. Did you watch it? No, but 
whenever you wear those silly heels with those ridiculous earrings, I always know something's up. <laughs> oh, Does everyone in this town think my show is about my wardrobe? Well, heck, it's uh, about a lot more than that. It's about your makeup, your hairdo. <laughs> Nobody takes what I do seriously. Well, honey, maybe, you know, they're just blinded by your beauty. I mean, a, a lot of people watch my show just because, you know, they, they think I'm a stud. Hello? Hey. <laughs> I know you. <laughs> you're Joanna Loudon from TV. Only here you're almost real. <laughs> does my blusher look as natural in person as it does on my beauty show? You have two shows? I only watch the real estate one. Oh, well, do, do yourself a favor and, and, and catch the beauty show. It's excellent, just, just excellent. Uh, I will. <laughs> in the meantime, I'm in the market for a house, and that three-bedroom tutor you showed sure was cool. <laughs> well, would you like to see it right now? It's even cooler on the inside. Me? <laughs> Well, I'm glad you got a flyer, but I'm not sure I want a busload of nuns on some spiritual quest coming to my baby's viewing. <laughs> An offering? Well, how much are we talking? <laughs> oh, don't plead poverty with me, sister. <laughs> some nuns, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Just the take from one bingo game would qualify them as sponsors. Uh, sponsors. Yeah, a gift up to $20 makes you a sponsor of the baby. And 20 to 50 makes you a patron, and anything over 50, you're an angel. And, um, what benefit is there in becoming, you know, a, an angel, aside from the, the obvious perk of eternal life in heaven? You get to hold little Steffi. Patrons can only look at her. So, uh, what do sponsors get to do? Press their noses up against the windows? <laughs> sponsors get to press their noses up against the windows. <clears throat> but, of course, you and Joanna will want to be angels. Well, since we gave you the, the carriage house rent-free uh, out back, you know, we, we thought that maybe we already were angels. If, if not demigods. Well, houses are not part of our registered gift list. We have you and Joanna down for a big screen TV. Oh. <laughs> and, and, and maybe a, a, a big uh, satellite dish to go with it? Too unsightly. A little dish would do. <clears throat> so how, how is house hunting? Nifty. Especially the tutor. From the powder room, you get this amazing view of the whole town. The graveyard, the sewage plant, the dump. I bet on a clear day you can see all, all the way to the slaughterhouse. <laughs> I hope, I hope, I hope. <laughs> You're buying a house? Well, hold off on the down payment until you read this. Wow! A baby viewing. Is this your baby? Yep. And that little look just cost you 20 to 50. <laughs> Worth every penny. Well, thanks. You're an angel. <gasps> well, a patron. <laughs> uh, Dave, <laughs> you know, if you like the tutor, should we write up an offer? No. It had a flagstone walkway. So? Joanna, everybody knows that Walking on flagstone causes memory loss in laboratory rats. Dave, you could have the flagstones ripped out. Yeah, but I'd always know they'd been there. <laughs> not, not if you walked on it a lot. <laughs> what about the uh, Victorian on Manor Circle? It had smoke detectors. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you finally get, you know, your house to go up in flames and then the, the darn buzzers start going off. I think we should keep looking. How many houses are for sale in this county? Maybe a thousand. Ooh, <laughs> better get cracking. Race you to the station wagon. Ready? Go. 
<laughs> Dick, what should I do? Well, honey, you know, if you, if you hurdle the, the, the front hedge, you could still beat him. <laughs> hustle, hustle. <laughs> dollars are up. <laughs> Dick, are you trying to sneak a look at our baby without giving her a present first? Well, that, that punch sure looks inviting, doesn't it? <laughs> Keep an eye on that one. He's wily. <laughs> I'm Larry, this is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. I'm not going to look. Will you get away from me? We're here to view Miss Stephanie's cherished offspring, Miss Stephanie. Huh? Daryl feels it must be mind-boggling to have two family members with the same name. Uh, aren't, aren't you guys kind of in the, in the same boat? I don't think so. Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl. And this is my other brother Daryl. Nope. No Stephanie's in our family. Oh, uh, Tiffany Rattles. Daryl cautions you to proceed carefully. The rattle's still attached to its original owner. <laughs> oh, yeah, that must be from uh, Tiffany's new... Uh, reptile department. Uh, Sir George, would you uh, take this outside to that other gift table? You know, the, the, uh, the one behind the garage. You mean the garbage can? Oh, that gift table. Since Daryl here hunted for the gift, he should have the honor of holding baby Steffi. Uh, well, I don't know if your gift was worth $50. The defanging in Daryl's anti-venom shot cost 80 <laughs> Oh, okay. You're, you're allowed to lift our lassie, laddie. <laughs> well, obviously, you're no novice to neonatal. Daryl's never cuddled a sweet, soft, young thing before. Unless you count Daryl. <laughs> Show us the way to the baby. You can't miss her. She's the only one in the room who's drooling. Except for Thor here. <laughs> Put me down as patron. Three general admission tickets to the big carnival in Tyvale. They got a Canadian goose at Mambo's. Well, if you're good for a goose, we're good for a gander. <laughs> and Jim sprung for the bus tickets to Tyvale. Nope, changed my mind. Three tickets to the Moscow Circus. And world-famous Radio City Music Hall. Oh, they've got a Soviet bear that cha-chas. <laughs> Jim Dixon, we agreed the best we could afford was patron category. You made me pinky swear. <laughs> yeah, in, in this state, uh, pinky swearing is legally binding. <laughs> right, right, Thor? <laughs> I didn't want to come off an old tight wad like some people. It's not my fault my electric bill is sky high. Well, it's no wonder you keep your heat on day in, day out. It's like a darn oven in your house. Please stop arguing or I'll have to deduct seconds from your baby holding time. Oh, brace yourself for a blast of bawling, Boisky. Oh, 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 she's purring. Oh, oh. Dickums. My, uh, my babe in arms goes goo-goo for the guests, but poo-poo's her own papa. <laughs> she even cries when I croon my girl. Well, you know, some babies just don't dig the, the Motown sound. <laughs> Somebody say Motown? Bong, ba 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 bong ba 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 I got sunshine on a cloudy day. When it's cold outside, I get the month of May. I guess you'd say, what could make me feel this way, my girl?
Michael and Stephanie are frantic. They've unwrapped all their gifts, and they can't find your TV or satellite dish. I didn't buy them, George. You looked at baby Stephanie without paying? What's happening to you, Dick? I'm a cheap piece of dirt, George. I showed Dave 120 houses. He found something wrong with every single one of them. Wait till you hear this. No, no, no time. I... No time. I gotta buy a big screen. It was this old colonial on Maskell Road. He said the doorbell sounded insincere. I'm giving up. I mean, I'm not supposed to sell real estate. Obviously, I should change my name to Jolene and open up a beauty parlor. Well, Jolene, before you quit, you should go to his house. And beat him to a pulp? Well, you could, but you could also get an idea of the kind of house he'd like by seeing where he lives now. It's like when I had to replace the legs on the dining room table. I couldn't figure which kind to use, so flashlight in my mouth, I crawled underneath to have a look. And that helped? No, but I found a quarter in Dick's cup. <laughs> Well, I couldn't go over there now anyway. Dick just took the car. I could drive you in my pickup. Oh, George, let's go. And on the way, I'll tell you about the time I found a penny in Dick's loafer. See? I had to replace a leg on your bed, so flashlight in my mouth. I crawled underneath and had a look. Dave? It's Joanna. Oh, hi, Joanna. How you doing? Fine. I brought our handyman, George Utley, over with me. Nice to meet you, George. Nice to meet you, Dave. Thanks for stopping by. Anytime. Uh, Dave, we came over to see your house. Hope you liked it. We sure did. Uh, Dave, uh, I'd like to see the inside of your house so I have an idea what you're looking for. Oh, no, Joanna. You can't come in. I'm not wearing... Socks. I promise I won't look at you from the neck down. Oh, uh, anybody care for a soft drink? You got any Tom Collins mix? Finished it off at breakfast. I got no salt seltzer. No, I'm having that for dinner. Got anything else? How about soup? I got tomato, cream of mushroom, Dave, chicken. Dave, Dave, <laughs> could you turn on the lights? <sighs> I knew you'd ask that. <laughs> Dave, this this room is a little. Bizarro. Well, it's no more bizarro than my shrine to Lee Merriweather. <laughs> but your space flows better. <laughs> At least now I know what you like. Yeah. You. <laughs> Wasn't it neat spending all those afternoons driving around together? <laughs> yeah, neat. You never wanted to buy a house, did you, Dave? Oh, sh sure I did. I love the one with the flagstone walkway. You said you hated flagstone. Wow, an entire bedroom set made out of flagstone. <laughs> Aren't you afraid that canopy's gonna fall on your head? Dave, can you uh, afford a house? Well, that depends. Um... Is $240,000 enough? You have $240,000 in my head? It's amazing how much money you can save by not keeping the heat on day in, day out. You saved that money just by conserving energy? Yeah. Also, my aunt left me $239,500 in her will. You know, uh, Dave, I know sometimes when a young man meets someone who's kind of well-known and glamorous. <laughs> it's easy to be dazzled, but there comes a time when you have to let go. Okay. <laughs> I mean, there's a grieving process that we all go through when the beautiful love object of our dreams slips out of reach. I've already let you go, Joanna. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, you're really a little stuck on yourself, aren't you? <laughs> 
I get these crushes every couple of weeks. <laughs> Lately, I've been getting tingly feelings about Sally Struthers. <laughs> well, now that you're moving on to Miss Struthers, do you want me to take that mannequin off your hand? You really want a, a mannequin of, of me? Boy, you are stuck on yourself. <laughs> I'm going to glue Lee Merriweather's picture over your face. <laughs> At least she's not an egomaniac. Thanks for Steffi sitting, sir. Oh, uh, uh, Michael, have you and big Stephanie uh, finished inventory? Yeah, the total tally is five angels, 22 sponsors, 16 patrons, and one cheap piece of dirt. <laughs> That's, uh... Mr. Cheap Piece of Dirt to you. Oh, please, wall up that wailing. If you dry your ducks, darling, Daddy will buy you a Bill Blast baby blankie. Yeah, Zooks, all I have to do is bribe her like I do her namesake. Hush, hush, sweet Stephette. There's a pair of bitty-bitty Bichon booties in it for you. Oh, Dickie, my little bundle can be bought. <laughs> Honey, guess what? I sold Dave a house. And all along, <laughs> I, I thought you became a real estate agent just to see your name on bus benches. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I'm not just a fashion plate with a fabulous face and figure after all. No, but you're becoming one heck of an egomaniac. <laughs> Hi, congratulations. Thanks. <laughs> Neat, huh? Dave sold me this cool Joannikin for 30 bucks. Highway robbery, George. I could have sold you the original for 25. <laughs> Any progress on your new book? No, but I did come up with a great title. Decoys. A duck's date with death. <laughs> it definitely cornered the children's market. All I have to do by tomorrow is to come up with an intro, 18 chapters, a bibliography, and someone to write the damn thing. <laughs> well, I'm officially off maternity leave. Where's my welcome back party? Uh, we decided to put that money toward your retirement party. Yeah, and we almost have uh, enough saved for a solid gold feather duster. Oh, how sweet. And tacky. Well, as long as I'm here, I might as well do something. Where should I start? I, uh, I could use a refill. <sighs> Joanna, as long as you're up. <laughs> well, Stephanie, motherhood certainly hasn't changed you. Oh, thank you. Now, now that you're back to work, um, how do you plan to fill up your days? Well, I'll just 
sit here on the sofa and look pretty. Now, that's George's job. Oh. Well, then I'll sit here and greet all your silly guests. Let's just hope no one checks in. Uh, do you have reservations for Sam Leary? Welcome to the Stratford. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> Hi, I'm 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 Dick Loudon. Uh, you'll have to forgive our our greeter. She's she's new and totally apathetic. Oh, well, what I wouldn't blame her. I always bring out the worst in people. Yeah. Anyway, that's what Margaret said in her goodbye letter. You want to hear it? No, that's that's not. Uh... Anyway, it might uh, make you understand uh, me a little bit better. It says, "Dear Sam, you bring out the worst in people. That's why I'm leaving you." I'm also taking the kids, the mobile home, and your brother, Mel. <laughs> your, uh, your wife had an affair with, with your brother? Oh, he was taking a nap in the mobile home. <laughs> well, you know, uh, you know what they say, time, time heals all wounds. Yeah, well, that's what Mel and the kids told me uh, five years ago from a payphone in Tucson. That's the room, room two at, at the top, oh. top of the stairs. And take, take care. Thanks, Val. Oh, oh, wow! Look at that. Oh, oh, God. oh, a covered bridge. Nice. Oh, how much? Well, it's, it's yours. It's it's on the house. Yeah, I bet you get one of these to every sad sack that comes through here. <laughs> no, you're you're the inaugural sad sack. <laughs> so, uh, what do you guys do for fun around here? Well, uh, sometimes at night, you know, we'll bring out the old checkerboard and play one game, maybe two. And Dick's been known to get wild and pop some popcorn. Hey, I like uh, popcorn and checkers, maybe. Uh, you know, I'm good for a game or two, huh? Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, but I, uh, I'm busy writing a, a book on decoys. And as a matter of, a matter of fact, I better, I better get quacking. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's okay. I'll, uh, I'll just stumble up to my lonely room and, uh, pull down the shades and weep. Well, maybe, you know, maybe one game. Oh, wow, that's good. I mean, really good. You know, I used to play against a computer. Until Mark uh, drove away with it. And, uh, did, I, did I tell you that she uh, took my brother? Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, you know, at least, uh, at least he has, you know, something to play with when he, when he wakes up. The, the, the computer, I mean, not, you know, <laughs> not, uh, not, not, not Margaret. <sighs> That's a good one. <laughs> I haven't laughed in five years. <laughs> Welcome to the Stratford. Enjoy your stay. Gee, thanks, Stephanie. Oh, it's you. You live here. You couldn't possibly enjoy it. Something is horribly wrong with this room. Dick, did somebody buy the postcard of the covered bridge? I, I, I gave it away, George. Was this person a member of your family or close personal friend? No. Was this person somebody who pulled you out of a burning building as a child? <clears throat> no. Was this person Mamie Van Doren? <laughs> no, no, but that's, that's three down, George. I'm afraid I'm going to have to turn over all the cards. <laughs> I, uh, I gave it to, to a guest. Huh. You never gave me a postcard. Come to think of it, you never give me anything. Take, take a postcard, George. I'd rather have the tape dispenser. <laughs> okay, it's yours. It's a birthday present. Well, thanks for spoiling the surprise. Come to think of it, Dick, you haven't given me anything for quite a while. I just gave you a six-week maternity leave and, and a carriage house to live in. I mean office supplies. <laughs> Here, here's some rubber bands. Ew, the thin ones. <laughs> Sam, 
Sam, you, uh, you, you do know it's, it's your move, don't you? <laughs> you asked me that same thing 20 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, except this time I'm saying it with a certain sarcastic edge in my voice. <laughs> okay, if you want to play speed checkers. Let's play another one, okay? Sam, you've lost four in a row. You're lousy at this. But I let you win. I mean, that's the least I could do for you. You gave me that wonderful postcard. Great. There's nothing I enjoy more than, than a, a good thrown game of, of checkers. Is my new friend getting mad at me? No, but uh, my, my book is, is waiting for me, and I, I really should get quacking. <laughs> that wasn't funny the first time, Dick. Well, why would anyone want to play with a sad sack anyway? You know, it, it, it's funny, but you don't hear the expression sad sack for like 25 years, and then you hear it twice in the same day. Sort of like your quacking joke. Thank you, Stephanie. Oh, uh, jo uh, Joanna, would, would you like to uh, play some checkers? No, I, 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 I don't play with women. They cheat, every one of them. Sure, I'd love to play a game. Well, uh, uh, you can't. You, you'll cheat, every damn one of you. Welcome to the Stratford. Enjoy your stay. What could be greater? My girlie's a greeter. <laughs> in my work, I didn't notice you. Cat Zooks, you're still on the clock? My cuppers runneth overtime. Oh, Michael, I'm exhausted. I just want to go home, put my feet up on the sofa, and read some magazines. <laughs> Joanna's been running me ragged. My God, is there no charity under that big furry sweater? Why do I bother to come into the lobby? Well, this family man's famished. What say? You, me, and the bay blow this bird for a burger. Okay, let's get snacking. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> oh uh, uh, George, I'd, I'd like you to meet uh, Sam Leary. Uh, this is uh, George Utley, our handyman. So you're the guy Dick gave the covered bridge postcard to. He gave me a tape dispenser. <laughs> Well, I'd rather have my postcard. <laughs> Me too. Okay, the winner goes first. I, I've, I've got a good uh, uh, five or six hours of work ahead of me tonight. All right, I'll just, uh, I'll just sit here and, uh, you know, keep myself entertained. And <laughs> you're, uh, you're checking out tomorrow, right? Great, so. Okay, play it again, Sam. Okay, 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 okay. Say, if I weren't your employee, I'd fire you. It's almost nine. I was up half the night playing checkers with, with Sam. You know, you meet up with a guy like that, it's hard to blame Margaret. <laughs> Mel and the kids, for that matter. I hear you. I don't know what the hell you're talking about, but I hear you. Welcome to the Stratford. Enjoy your stay. It's me, Stephanie. Oh, in that case, never mind. Dick, guess what? I just sold the house next door and made a huge commission. Oh, that's great, huh? Welcome to the Stratford. Enjoy your stay. <laughs> I'm not a guest anymore, Stephanie. I bought the house next door. <laughs> Hi, neighbor. Chapter 12. Painting a decoy takes time and patience, so you better get quacking. <laughs> I can't start off.
off every chapter with the same joke. Dick, you miserable turncoat. Michael, I'm busy. Well, well, let's not beat around the bush. The word on the street, the buzz on the boulevard, the talk on the turnpike is that Sam's your new best friend. Well, the street, the boulevard, and the turnpike are lying, Michael. You mean I'm still your primo amigo? I don't have a primo amigo. Of course you do. Say moi, say moi, tis I. <laughs> you remember the time I had no place to stay? You, you, you let me sleep here for free? Oh, I, n I never thought you'd pay. See, only a best friend would know that. <laughs> we rushed over as soon as we heard the word on the street. It's, it's just too awful. Appreciate the sympathy, seniors. Losing Dicklet as my best friend has been a big blow to this little Joe. Your best friend? Dick's my best friend. <laughs> Your best friend? He's my best friend. Everybody in town know that you're each other's best friend. <laughs> just because we've seen each other every day of our lives since kindergarten? Well, it's just a friendship of convenience. <laughs> This is the blackest day of my life. Don't tell me, my best friend, Mr. Resnick. I trusted you and you threw me over for some fresh-faced sad sack. At least that's the word on the street. Mis Mr. Resnick, I am not your best friend. As a matter of fact, I, I, I don't even know your, your first name. It's Art. Art. Say it like you mean it. Art. Feels good, huh? <laughs> Bottom line, Dick, what's Sammy got that we got not? Other than that stunning postcard. <laughs> Look, for the hundredth time, Sam is not my best friend. Now get out of here. I got work to do. Oh, hi, guys. Hi, buddy. It's picnic time. Oh, well, this explains the sudden send-off. Tell me, how can you mend a broken heart? Not even the Bee Gees figured that one out. <laughs> Do you like pastrami? A best friend would know if I liked pastrami. Well, I bet my best friend likes pimento. Look, look Sam, I, I am not your best friend. I, I don't have a best friend. And even if I did, he, he'd never be so... so... Tall? Overbearing. You think I'm overbearing? Yes. Okay. Okay, right, right. I guess you, I, I can take a hint. Good. You think I'm overbearing? I am overbearing? I mean, I shared my deepest, darkest secrets with you. I, I didn't want to know about Margaret's early days as a contortionist. <laughs> well, I thought you wanted to know I ruptured my groin. <laughs> Here, I think this postcard belongs to you. I'm just glad I didn't have it laminated on my lunchbox. Chapter 12, how to laminate postcards on your duck decoy. <laughs> Joanna, we have to talk. This greeter job isn't fulfilling me. My talents are being wasted. Finished all the magazines, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Joanna, would you uh, toast this pimento loaf sandwich for me? I'll do it. Oh, you're giving up on your greeting job? It wasn't fulfilling me. It was a waste of my talents. Finished all the magazines, huh? <laughs> yeah. Out, woman. We've got business to discuss with your husband. Manly business. Okay, that's it. I am never coming into this lobby again. Now what? Word on the street is you dumped your best friend Sam because he's overbearing. Where is this, this street you're always talking about? Actually, uh, it's your front porch. You can hear everything out there. Since when did you start liking toasted pimento loaf sandwiches? We had you pegged a pastrami man. 
Well, you're wrong. Now go. Not so fast. You still haven't filled that recently vacated best friend slot. Line up, men. <laughs> okay, Dick, take your pick. <laughs> this is idiotic. Dick's right. The line won't work. Let's form a circle. <laughs> then Dick can close his eyes, spin around, and point. He can... Spin around and point? I could wind up with that, that armchair, or, or worse, worse yet, Mr. Rusnick. <laughs> Look. A, a friendship has, has, to be, has to be developed and, and, and nurtured, and, and, and it has to be a, a mutual. I mean, you you can't pick your best friend out of out of a, out of a hat. Why not? Because we don't have a hat. <laughs> Would a cap do? Well, it's a little avant-garde for this town. Oh, what the hell, Chester? It's the '90s. <laughs> Uh, Dick, can I have my picnic basket back? Uh, it's been in the family for years. Oh, thank you. Gee, Sam doesn't seem overbearing at all. In fact, he seems rather pleasant. Well-groomed, too. Check out the shine on those floor shines. <laughs> He'd make the ultimate dream friend. <laughs> oh, thank you very much. Thank you. I, uh, I've got to go. I'm having some builders come over to give me a... Estimate on a moat. <laughs> uh, since you were Dick's last best friend, you should pick out his next best friend. Don't, don't I have any choice in this? No, no absolutely. Well, look, I'll pick, but why would you want him for a best friend? I mean, there's no pleasing this guy. Come to think of it, Dick is a rather crotchety old thing. <laughs> Not much in the personality department. Uh, so true. And all he does is whine. Yeah. He's not much fun to be around. Except when he tells that quacking joke. Oh, that <laughs> makes me so yeah, yeah, that's funny. Like that. that's... <laughs> but it's hardly enough to build a friendship on. Yeah, yeah. Kind of, kind of it's too bad we can't be our own best friends. Hey, Why, George, you. George, you've got it. We'll, we'll just bob for names and be each other's cherished chums. <laughs> hey, can I play? My last chum was a real dud. Okay. <laughs> Sam Zan. That makes it an even six. I wonder what I could get for this place. <laughs> Jim. Well, I guess I'm my own best friend. Oh, hey, uh, Chester. <laughs> Not a bad choice. Hey, no, you you the hey I got me, babe. Oh. <laughs> I got Mr. Rusnick. Bummer. <laughs> Was. Whoops. Sam. Oh, I wonder who I'll get. <laughs> it's anybody's guess, George. George. Oh, that's me. <laughs> well, I think it's safe to say that uh, you all deserve yourselves. Well, I think I'll take my best friend out to dinner. Oh, can me and my best friend tag along? Sure. Hey, how about the two of us? <laughs> me and me could use a bite. <laughs> yeah, we're starved. Yeah. Us too. I hope we can get a table for 12. <laughs> oh, Dick. Uh, the guys on the street would like to know if you'd like to tag along. You know, I mean, find an extra share. No, uh, 13 at a, a table is, is bad luck. <laughs> right, uh, can I have my postcard back? No. See ya. <laughs>